All right, here's another very amusing build that takes advantage of the fact that Anubis will work on tier two and lower faint units, even though it's only level one. So if we have level three units from the early tiers that are faint pets, Anubis will activate them at level three without actually needing to be leveled itself at all. And there are some pretty powerful faint pets on the lower tiers. And so we're gonna go for one of my favorites, which is the sea urchin. Now we are also making use of uh, Kiwi here, which um, the ability that it has at the moment, you know, selling, replacing a strawberry for big buffs in the early game, the days are numbered for that ability because on the test server it's being changed. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head exactly which version they're, they're on at the moment on the test server, but it's had a few different iterations already. So let's just enjoy it while it lasts. We take the puppy and pangolin combo. So hopefully if we uh, manage to find the sea urchin, we could potentially pill the pangolin and get extra stats onto it. I can't remember if it happens in this game or not, but we are going to win by one HP. So the puppy pangolin combo definitely worked out. Now there is Bigfoot there. I passed it up because I'm, I'm really just hard rolling for sea urchin. And in order to try and make this work, I, I felt like I really had to try and uh, force finding specific things on specific turns. And you'll see what I mean when we, we end up with some kind of crazy luck in this uh, run. And uh, here we face Flame. Uh, I don't know what he was going for here, but he is going to get the better of me because I'm only playing a three squad. It would have been an easy win otherwise if I hadn't just uh, messed around there. So we get the activation on the um, lasagna and then we find our second sea urchin. So really the main thing I want to do is have multiple sea urchins. And the main reason for that is the fact that, uh, you know, when you get to the late game, reducing the HP on the front few units by five just isn't going to do very much. And so we need to stack multiples and then stack multiple Anubises in order to trigger the ability enough times where the health removal is actually going to matter. And so we, we made another uh, greed play in one of those earlier turns there, taking the two stoats to give ourselves the, the chance of finding all the powerful level up units on turn uh, seven. So we're looking for a crow, we're looking for blobfish, we're looking for a cyclops. And there's a cyclops in the shop, and then we also get a cyclops and a blobfish from the, uh, um, from the stoat. So pill blobfish, and that's going to take the sea urchin up to level 2.66. We, we really have to hit this kind of luck, I think, to make this work. And uh, I'll show a bunch of clips later on from some other runs that, um, you know, they just couldn't quite get going because we, we didn't get the, the level 3 sea urchins quickly enough. If you only have, you know, a level two sea urchin, it means you can't remove any health from the third unit on the opposing team. And you really need to be taking as much HP away as possible. And so going for the uh, the level threes really felt like it was absolutely necessary. So second uh, sea urchin level up results in the another 2.66. And I think I'm gonna take the chicken for one turn after I pill this blobfish. Snapping Turtle was another unit that I was really interested in, so I'm a little bit surprised that I passed that up there. Um, but we faced this uh, Chupacabra team. Thankfully, we um, prevent them from uh, getting any activations there. The Sea Urchin is going to reduce the stats and then Mana Snipe as a result of the Cyclops. And we, we get the win by 1 HP. Bit of a desync error there. Now, I don't want to level the Sea Urchin here because of the Cyclops, but I, I feel like, am I gonna do it anyway? Yeah, it's really frustrating to feel like you're wasting the Cyclops buffs, but we honestly don't have space on the team anyway. Plus we know for a fact that Anubis doesn't need to be a higher level. So you kind of have to fight your own instincts there to, um, you know, just take the buffs from the Cyclopses. It's plus two, two, plus the four mana on top. And that could end up, you know, saving you like it did in the previous battle against that Jerboa team. Um, definitely fine here. I think given we've had these crazy level ups, we are a little bit uh, ahead of curve, but 
you know, there's plenty of opponents that could still destroy us at this point. Lemon, am I going to take Lemon? Yeah, definitely get some kind of equipment on the Sea Urchin. And, and Skewer was my preference, as I was mentioning, but, you know, I think it's definitely worth it to take the Lemon in this situation. As we immediately go against Pineapple Tiger Bug. So the Lemon's going to absorb some damage there. And, uh, yeah, we, we have the stats plus the Skewer to finish off this team. But it's now we're now on turn 11, 7 trophies, and we don't have any Anubis on the team at all. And that's really the crux of this whole team. So we buy the uh, Lemon just for snipe protection. I still do want to have a Skewer uh, on the team. We don't find any uh, Anubis in the shop. So we'll just use the Cat to get extra health. And uh, level 3 Tabby Cat. I don't know when the last time I saw a Tabby Cat on turn 11 was, but uh, clearly this person going for the achievement with the, uh, the Octopus and the Lioness is there. But now we really just have to hard roll for Anubis, and thankfully we get one on the first roll. And I think I'm just going to pill the Snapping Turtle onto it. Most of the time I was putting uh, Skewer on the Sea Urchins, but since they both have uh, Lemon already, we'll just give it to the Anubis instead. And then we roll a cow so we can improve the Anubis stats a little bit to help it survive a, a Mantis Shrimp Snipe. But I really want to have as many Anubis on the team as possible so that we're reducing almost everything down to 1 HP. And that was a very satisfying round there where the uh, Tiger Badger setup gets ruined by the Skewer. So nine trophies. We need to find at least one more Anubis on this turn for me to be satisfied with this build, and there it is. Now, could we find another one? We actually do, plus we get the uh, Oyster to enable us to buy this lemon onto the Anubis at the back as well. So triple Anubis, double level three sea urchin. And look at the stats, we go against level two behemoth. We're gonna reduce the wombat and the eagle down to one and the behemoth down to two. The melon does prevent them from getting one shot there but I don't think it's going to matter because we actually bought one Foo Dog and had chicken for one turn, which means that the Anubis has 7 HP and results in a 1 HP win. Incredibly lucky to get away with that, um, but I was very pleased to get the win in the end. So here are some bonus clips. There's a really bizarre 3 squad on turn 8 there, clearly in the process of a Jersey Devil pivot. And then we've got a bunch of... Um, rounds where I actually got the successful stat reduction uh, skewer. Um, but uh, these runs all ended in a failure. You know, you do reach a point where reducing the stats just doesn't do enough. And clearly you're just gonna lose to most summon teams anyway. So again, triple Anubis, this team loses a huge amount of stats, plus the skewer kills the buffalo. And then uh, the lionesses are reduced to one as well. But there were some other uh, combinations of this that I was going for. I can't remember. Yeah, okay, here's just another example of um, you know a big unit at the front losing all its health. Uh, the crisp doesn't make any difference there. And I've got one last clip of the vanilla team here before we get on to one of the variations. So 40-something health uh, buffalo gets reduced down, and then the sea urchin at the front is going to trade two for one because of the skewer. But uh, this one didn't have any chance, you know, turn 11, three trophies. That was just a, a little highlight at the end before it uh, fizzled out. So here is one of the variations that I was trying to go for. We actually have level three Anubis this time, which isn't necessary for the sea urchin, but it is for the mammoth. I'm not sure why I was freezing the anglerfish. Uh, maybe I'd seen something interesting on another team that I wanted to steal, but yeah, probably not a smart move there. But the Great One resummon with the Pteranodon actually removes their Jersey Devil here. And I think that's going to be enough for us to eke out a draw. Uh, the one Trumpet turns into a 10-7 Doggo, but with 11 HP on the Anubis at the back, we scrape the tie. And yeah, I did try a, a few versions of this with Flying Squirrel to try and keep the Evil Book alive. But in order to do that, you need the Flying Squirrel to also be level 3. So in the end, I settled on just trying to, um, you know, get lucky and roll Bad Dog, which is another reason I shouldn't really have the Angler frozen here. 
So a, cl a classic team in the current version, Rabbit, Hippocampus, um, Behemoth. And I think we're just not going to quite have enough here. Yeah. Obviously, units at the back, they're not going to lose any stats from uh, Sea Urchin. So, um, yeah, we can't get that one done. So reset the uh, evil book. Now here, I definitely make a mistake. I should just take the Anubis in the shop and put it up front because then we activate the Sea Urchin again. But for whatever reason, I leveled the Mammoth instead. The Mammoth is actually going to get sniped here and pulled forwards. So you get a weird situation where the Pteranodon re-summons the Mammoth in the back and it gives buffs despite being in the last position. Pretty unusual to see that. And we end up winning anyway. So I think level 3 Sea Urchin, yep. And yeah, I don't know why I have the two Anglerfish frozen. I must have gone against someone who had a token pet and I was just uh, trying to steal it, but honestly I think this team would uh, not suit having a token pet in it at all. So we'll just keep buffing our two lemon units and hope that uh, that helps us get through, but um, we're on one heart and yeah, we end up facing you know, huge uh, scaling team with only a single sea urchin. We just can't reduce the stats on the jellyfish enough. If we had two uh, sea urchins there, the jellyfish would have been reduced down to a point where we could have actually KO'd it. But instead, um, yeah, that run ends up failing on turn 15. Honestly, it was pretty lucky to get that far in the first place. Here's another one with a triple Anubis plus these sea urchins. And we have the great one comes out, but bizarrely the crane had pepper. I feel like pepper is pretty rare um, in, in customs compared to melon, uh, but uh, we ended up winning regardless. And then here's another one against the summon team that you feel like it should be impossible to do anything against them. But the great one is actually going to reduce the stats on the Jersey Devils to the point where the skewer is going to KO them both. So the orca... Uh, respawn at the end don't get any buffs and because of our I think it was pita bread on the Anubis at the back we end up winning there then next one here's one where I ended up with a dromedary that I ended up having to keep for the whole game because of the stats but I actually mispositioned so the great one didn't come out at the start of battle the uh, um, the urchin should have been one space back but it doesn't make any difference we end up winning anyway and then here's level one evil book versus level three evil book. And uh, they, they actually kill their own units. Um, and it's a, a comfortable win in the end as the second great one appears. So an incredibly fun team to play, even if its power level falls off towards the end. Do let me know in the comments if you managed to do anything with Pteranodon evil book as well.